episode of Soldier Soldier. That's after the Cook Report. This man buys and sells medicines which could kill. This chemist is offering us our own production line to repackage cheap medicines to look like the real thing. This Chinese businessman does the same, and he doesn't care where the pills are from, how they've been stored, or how dangerous they would be to take. Mr. Yang, my name is Roger Cook from Central Television in the UK. Yeah. I'd like you to explain to us why you are selling counterfeit drugs. I'm not selling drugs. You're only in for the money, aren't you? Take no responsibility for what you might do selling counterfeit drugs the history of which you do not know. An evil and pernicious trade perpetrated by some very cynical uh, entrepreneurs. Made from dead people. And uh, <laughs> the problem is that if these people have uh, AIDS or something, I mean, all these things come, come over. Any child could copy one of these boxes with a jumbo outfit in the kitchen. Somewhere in the region of one in 20 packs particularly in pharmaceuticals, are already counterfeit. The Far East is home to many a medicine man, often the proprietor of a shop like this, purveying ancient remedies for everything from toothache to typhoid. The locals take these traditional treatments very seriously indeed, whereas we Westerners are inclined to think some of them are a bit bizarre. But there are other kinds of medicine man at large, particularly here in Hong Kong. Unscrupulous traders who, with scant regard for human safety, blatantly counterfeit the profitable products of major drug companies and sell them around the world. One such is Peter Yang, one of the world's biggest counterfeiters of pharmaceuticals. Just ship it as it was to Hong Kong. And then we hit the bus with all the Chinese name change over here. I mean, just have asked the, you know, some, some old lady, some woman, about 45, 50, and they come to a, to a place and then they would get out the bush, change it. His sample book is a testimony to his success in scouring the Far East for supplies of cheap medicines, which he repackages as new. He doesn't worry if they're out of date or have been badly stored and are now dangerous. He has factories just across the border in China where the laws are more relaxed. In China, they don't take too much, too much serious about these things. Hong Kong is a, uh, is a, uh, you know, a, it's again, a street. Counterfeiters uh, are extremely sophisticated in the pharmaceutical field. We're talking today of uh, a, a, an evil and pernicious trade perpetrated by some very cynical uh, entrepreneurs who have got scant regard for human life. To penetrate the shadowy world of counterfeit drugs, we set up EcoCon, our own pharmaceutical import-export business in the centre of London. Speaking. Yeah, what you We contacted drug traders around Europe and the Far East and made it plain we wanted medicines which were cheap and we weren't too concerned about the quality. We also recruited the help of racehorse owner Ken Higson, an expert in buying and selling drugs, who until recently ran his own pharmaceutical wholesalers. It seems much easier to swap a box in a pharmaceutical entity than it is to swap a racehorse. Even the French perfume companies spend three, four, five pounds on a box to beat the counterfeiters, but the pharmaceutical companies don't seem to care. Even a child could copy one of these boxes with a jumbo outfit in the kitchen. Within days of setting up EcoCon, we'd hooked some of the biggest fish in the business. In Antwerp, Joris Geisert offered us a deadly cocktail of medicines. I bought from Lit uh, Lithuania some, uh, some drugs. And the problem of these drugs is that they were made this called uh, human somatropin and that's made from dead people and uh, <laughs> the problem is that if these people have uh, AIDS or something I mean all these things come come over 
So what? what I mean, I mean, human. It's human. Yeah, it's a human growth hormone. Human like growth that. hormone. Mm -hmm. And what's that used for in Europe? I mean, uh, for um, well, for anabolics. Yeah. There's a lot of anabolics being sold to human people, so, in order to to be more performant Push. for for bodybuilders. Yeah. He also offered us a half-strength heart drug he's importing from the former East Germany with 10 milligrams of active ingredients in pills which are being misleadingly resold as containing 20 milligrams. If I analyze this thing, I mean, only half, half, half the value is inside. And they're selling it on the complete German market now. And I'll sit and talk to you. The heart pills would, of course, harm individual patients. But at the London Hospital for Tropical Diseases, Consultant physician Dr. Ron Behrens warns that there have already been cases of below-strength pills for malaria causing widespread problems. Well, the implications of uh, fraudulent drug use are basically equivalent of, 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 of starting a huge inferno from a small match. You start with a small problem such as an inadequate uh, dose of drug, but unfortunately that generates a resistant organism which very rapidly spreads, and because the drugs then don't work, many more people succumb to the resistant bacteria or malaria and therefore you've got a huge problem which you cannot manage because what you have on your shelf you know, in the pharmacy no longer works. Europeans and Americans travel to these parts of the world and they take drugs uh, to protect themselves or to treat themselves and of course where there is resistance uh, these drugs do no longer work and we're seeing that time and time again. <laughs> Our next contact was in Spain. In Alicante on the Costa Blanca, we were introduced to the officers of Inexfer. The high security gates concealed a high tech factory capable of offering a complete counterfeiting service. If you tell us what you want us to do, to make each month or year, you'll have to say whether you want us to make capsules, tablets or injectables because we'll have to set up the right machines no one else will be using that equipment but our trail started in Istanbul in Turkey which is one of the few countries which does not recognize patents and copyright in medicines manufacturers here can freely copy any formula without necessarily worrying about quality control this is one of the newest and best-selling drugs in the world. It's called Losec, and it's a highly successful treatment for stomach ulcers. In Turkey, its equivalent costs around six pounds for a 28-day course. Back in Britain, the same treatment costs five times as much. This is the Turkish version, which should only be sold in Turkey, and this is the British. As you can see, the packaging is completely different, and even the names are different. But if we wanted to buy cheaply in Turkey and sell in Britain at a fat profit, our researchers quickly showed that would be very little problem at all. On Merseyside, we found a printer to copy the British low-sec labels. We sent up a sample one day, and 24 hours later, we had a roll of a thousand, enough to label 30,000 pounds worth of low-sec. They cost us just 140 pounds. In case the labels fell into the wrong hands, we put in a deliberate mistake. We made the copyright R touch the C in the name Losek. No one other than an expert would spot it. To make the boxes, we selected a London printing company at random from the yellow pages. They used a computer to laser scan the box we supplied, printed it on board and die stamped it out. We added a batch number and expiry date and a deliberate mistake, leaving out a printer's mark on the bottom of the box. But the chemists who handle the medicine simply take the packages on trust. Uh, yes, uh, these are the typically British uh, low-sec packaging. So what would you say if I said that one of those packages was a counterfeit? Well, I'd be very surprised, but uh, if you say that's so, then uh, accept it. Um, I haven't spotted it. It would be quite easy then, wouldn't it, for an unscrupulous and greedy operator to infiltrate potentially dangerous counterfeit medicines onto the British market? 
Uh, yes, I would say that we are totally dependent at the moment upon the, the faith we have in our wholesale chain. And if somebody were determined to introduce and could somehow introduce into that chain counterfeit goods, uh, it would make our lives uh, very difficult indeed. It's quite a frightening thought, in fact. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised that this package is counterfeit. Um, it is two-color printing. It's on fairly standard board. Um, it's available. The board is readily available in the market. The inks are readily available in the market. The printers are there to produce the package. This is simple printing. Obviously, the packaging is easily counterfeited. But if we had put one of these holograms onto this pack, and it was an extremely difficult hologram to counterfeit, then you would have had a much, much more difficult task on your hands. But Astra, the makers of Losec, are still only experimenting with holograms. The fact that the Turkish capsules were blue and the English ones pink and beige, and the bottles were different, was still not a problem. By now, our undercover team had met Francesca Gatharan in Alicante. There'll be no problem with the Losec, with the capsules. No. Uh, this is what will happen. We have the encapsulating machines, we buy in a template for each system, and there's no problem if you've got the machine to handle it. We can make the same doses, of course. The bottles are not a problem either. Uh, there are people in Spain who can make them, you just give us one, we'll get it made. John Hurley is an expert in all areas of counterfeiting. Counterfeiting worldwide is estimated to be about 100 to 120 billion dollars per annum. That's equivalent to 5% of all world trade, which would suggest somewhere in the region of 1 in 20 packs, particularly in pharmaceuticals, are already counterfeit. The general public cannot have total confidence in what they're buying. There are no external features that will generally guarantee whether they're buying a genuine or a fake product. There are a number of high-tech systems in use, but basically they have to go back to a laboratory to be traced. Hong Kong is the next stop on our trail of the counterfeiters. We'd heard from a number of sources in Europe about a Chinese businessman called Peter. Using his racing connections, our undercover man Ken started the search amongst the colony's wealthy racegoers. Before long, he'd been pointed to Fortune Villa and the penthouse flat of Peter Yang, one of three aliases used by a man who only last year was found guilty of six counts of selling counterfeit medicines. Under the cover of buying and selling industrial and pharmaceutical chemicals, Yang specializes in buying cheap medicines all over the Far East and repackaging them for sale anywhere in the world. When we lured him to meet us in a hotel, Yang said he too could repackage the Turkish Losec. He could also copy the Losec formula using the basic generic chemicals, but this was too risky. And besides, he could get the genuine medicine in Europe. In that case, in that case, you have you have to look for a very cheap sources, you know, the capsule, uh, Italy or Portugal. Or something. It's the same color. Yeah, the same color you put a capsule into the, this, this kind of bottle. What if we got the generic version of it, the same colour? Generic would, would not be, I'm afraid, generic would, would not be enough the same as uh, chemical construction, you know, the structure of the effective uh, uh, medicine. Yeah. yeah. You know, the problem is that can, if you, you must Inside the content, you must sell the gen. This was the reason why, because... The bioavailability has got to be the same. Yeah, because you know why? Because if you give the genetic inside, and then you already sell in this bottle, which is not, uh, you know, if, if, if the agent of the Losec in UK has a right. doubt, yeah. has a doubt, they would buy one bottle from you. The shop and do a bioavailability study. Yes, they will analyze the, the capsule. And then, if they analyze the capsule, if this came from the same factory, it's no problem. They cannot shoot you. They cannot do anything to you. They cannot take any legal examination. But if they analyze the capsule with different chemical structures, they know this is genetic. They, they can take action against you. Agents. He also told us where he obtained other medicines. So let's be sensible. Yeah. So we, we can get that from vet now. Yeah. 
we can get that from Pakistan. Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, but this we get directly from Sandals. Yeah. What about? Is is there any okay. cheap prices in Cambodia? Cambodia, Cambodia, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, we know about Vietnam. Yeah. Because China is quite close to Vietnam at that yeah. time, and then we have some associations with Vietnam. With Vietnam, yeah. Because before then, we supplied the medicine to Vietnam. Yeah. What from China? Behind me is the border between China and Hong Kong. Over recent years, Hong Kong has become an ever more important staging post in the burgeoning trade between China and the rest of the world. But the bamboo curtain round China is also a very effective screen round the illegal activities of criminals like Peter Yang. Using phony paperwork and forged packaging with very dubious contents and a willing network of greedy customers, he's ideally placed to take a major share in the burgeoning world market for counterfeit pharmaceutical drugs. Because of his criminal record, Yang is cautious. I know you like this kind of business, but you also have to work like a spy. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. A smart guy. Yeah. Work like a spy. At the Hong Kong customs offices, we showed Inspector Ronnie Chang our evidence. He said they couldn't act unless the manufacturers themselves made a direct complaint. He is the only person capable to testify in court to prove that all this packaging were not being authorized by the manufacturer. And the drug companies are reluctant to complain. I think there's uh, a great deal of secrecy uh, in, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, there is uh, understandable reluctance uh, by companies uh, to talk a great deal about uh, the counterfeiting of pharmaceuticals. They, cl they don't want to unsettle or unnerve uh, uh, patients who will buy pharmaceuticals uh, and, and make them feel that uh, perhaps what they're buying uh, is not the genuine product. It's not just Losec which the unscrupulous traders are copying. Yang alone gave us a list of hundreds of medicines, offering the chance of a quick profit and the risk of sudden death. Ken Higson described the way one of Yang's counterfeit drugs, Voltaren, reached the market. Voltaren leaves Sibagag in Switzerland, goes to Vietnam. In Vietnam, we know Cathay Pacific will not take water on their planes. So God knows how they store it. From Vietnam, it goes to Hong Kong. From Hong Kong to China, where the fraud is committed. It is still the tablet inside, made by the multinational company, but the fraudulent box is put on it. It then goes back to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to the United Kingdom, United Kingdom into a wholesaler. Nobody would know, nobody would tell. From the wholesaler to the chemist, and God forbid, it could be my own mother, children or grandchildren who take that product, what could be deadly. If that product is diverted out of the factory or made illegally somewhere and not subject to those controls, to those analyses, and then shipped across temperature zones, for example, across climatic zones, put into conditions of high humidity, taken out and dried, put back again, one cannot... Uh, guarantee that that product is stable and that the active ingredient so important to the action of that medicine is still there and is still in the same state in which it left the manufacturer's uh, uh, shipping office. So these people are putting the lives of others at risk. One has to draw that conclusion, yes. Well, had one case to spare. Back at EcoCon in London, we're ready for the next stage to test whether wholesalers would be tempted to buy our phony packs of Losec. We faxed a random selection, tempting them by saying it was from the Far East and available at a highly competitive 22% discount. We claimed it wasn't counterfeit. It wasn't long before we got a response. Good morning, EcoCon. Can I help you? Who's calling? Mr. Richard Taylor. Richard Taylor, managing director of Dowelhurst in Warwick, was keen if we could make it appear that the product had originated in Europe. And he knew someone who was a dab hand with the paperwork. I can think of someone who might be able to help, help you out. A chap called um, Mr. Horn. Mr. Horn, H-O-R-N. Yeah, Mr. Claude Horn. 
Right. I know well. We met Mr. Horn in Geneva. He agreed to import the LOSEC into the European Union through Antwerp and to legitimize it on paper as far as Mr. Taylor is concerned. He boasts of 27 years of similar operations, but he's still cautious. I never buy and sell myself. In this business, you must always, somebody buys, a door must be closed and somebody sells. But if anything goes wrong, you can always say, well, I bought some goods and I sold some goods. What's wrong with this? In effect, you launder it through the system. I always have at least two parties, even three involved, so that we can all say, I brought and sold goods in the common market. What's wrong with this? Yes. On the face of it, that's yeah. fine. It's got a British license. Yeah. I have to be convinced that it's that I bought it through a European wholesaler. Yeah. That's where Claude came right. in. Yeah. And if the price is right, I'm, I might well buy them all. Excellent. That's not a problem. Fine. Any wholesaler receiving an offer of profitable pharmaceuticals from the Far East and at a discount of 22.5%. To them, the, the alarm bells must immediately be ringing. They should either check it out with the Medicine Control Agency or walk away. Anybody that doesn't do that is either very naive or dishonest. Richard Taylor, Roger Cook, Central Television. I'd like you to explain to me why you're willing to buy counterfeit LOSEC from the Far East. I don't buy counterfeit LOSEC from the Far East. You were proposing to buy it from us. We have secretly filmed you offering to buy this material you knew or must have known was counterfeit. Not at all. You, also told, you, all, you also told us how to get it laundered through Claude Horn in Switzerland. Not laundered. I offered to put it through a Euro European wholesaler. You also knew this material or should have known <coughs> coming from the Far East at a knockdown price was going to be a wrong one, and it was. I've never dealt knowingly in counterfeit product. We've also been told by Claude Horn that he does launder this stuff in. Well, that I don't he know. Gets... I'm not, nothing to do with Claude Horn. I'm not related to the gentleman. I'm not in partnership with the gentleman. Why should you so readily want to take some stuff, and the lot, too? I was nowhere near doing any business with that gentleman. I pointed him in the direction of a person who may have decided... I'm afraid... ...he deals in Far Eastern markets. He deals in a lot of other products as well. I'm afraid the transcript and the film doesn't come across that way. You were willing to take the lot if he could launder it. No, I wasn't willing to be and, laundered as such, as you would say. And he said he could. And you said if he could get it into the European community, you'd take it. No, I said that if he was satisfied with all the checks that he must do, then I might look at it. LOSEC is made by a Swedish company called Astra. Behind me is their UK headquarters at King's Langley in Hertfordshire. We asked for a formal interview. But like many a drug company worried about adverse publicity, they refused. Given that LOSEC is perhaps the biggest selling drug in Europe at the moment, maybe they're more worried than most. But from their Swedish base in Stockholm, an executive admitted that counterfeiting had become a major industry problem over the past three years, and that sophisticated counterfeiters in southern Europe and in the Far East could produce not only the packaging, but also what purported to be the pharmaceutical product itself. Mr. Yang, my name is Roger Cook from Central Television in the UK. Yeah. I'd like you to explain to us why you are selling counterfeit drugs. I am not selling counterfeit drugs. You are selling counterfeit drugs. You've offered to sell us a very large no, number no, no, of counterfeit no, no, drugs. I'm not selling counterfeit drugs. You are selling counterfeit no, no. drugs, and you offered to sell us a very large number. No, 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 no. I'm not selling counterfeit drugs. You are crazy. No, we're not crazy. No. You are not selling. You are selling. I'm, I'm not selling. I'm not selling counterfeit drugs. You are selling counterfeit no, drugs. No. You offered us a whole list of drugs which you would counterfeit without taking any responsibility for the people who might be damaged or killed. Well, you might run away. You're only in it for the money, aren't you? take no responsibility for what you might do selling counterfeit drugs, the history of which you do not know. They could be contaminated, they could be past their sell-by date. The Medicines Control Agency stresses there is no cause for alarm and anyone taking any medicine prescribed... Pornography on the computer...